This week's episode of The Horror Show with Brian Keene is brought to you by Fire Lord HD. Fire Lord HD, the new YouTube channel, which brings you premium yoga instructionals, knitting tutorials, cooking classes, and... Wait, wait Dungeon Master, get in here! <laughs> I'm sorry, folks, this is a live ad read, but I was just <laughs> given this copy before we went. Dungeon Master 77.1. Yes. You have a new YouTube channel called Fire Lord HD, and you gave me this ad copy. I have never seen premium yoga tutorials, knitting instructionals, or cooking classes on your channel. That's because that is not true. <laughs> Okay. What I actually do is animation and skits and just normal humor stuff. Whatever. It's really random. So subscribe for funny content and uh, stop by for the next episode of Sour Frog. That's right. Sour Frog is... You have multiple animated series. Yes. Uh, I know Sour Frog is a favorite among Stephen Kosniewski and Wiley Young, but you also have McBoom which I enjoy, and uh, the saga of Bread Mart. That's one of my personal Which is, is, is what if Walmart was a fascist organization? <laughs> um, <It> isn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, so, Fire Lord HD. All one word, all lowercase. Fire, as in what burns your old man. Lord, as in what you will be one day. HD, as in high death, I, or as in high Dave. I came up with that username when I was six. So. When you were six. So. so it has no meaning, really. Well, we just... <laughs> way to sell the channel. <laughs> we just gave it meaning. So Fire Lord HD on YouTube. Subscribe and like today. And there came a day, a day like no other, when the horror genre stood threatened by the forces of evil. On that day... The Horror Show with Brian Keene was born. Brian Keene, Mary San Giovanni, Dave Thomas, Matt Wilderson, along with occasional co-hosts Phoebe and Dungeon Master 77.1, these ambassadors of horror stand at the door, bringing you the biggest names in the business, as well as tomorrow's superstars. Now, here they are, The Horror Show with Brian Keene. I hear it in my head, San Giovanni. <laughs> my last chance to play the guitar. And you know what song this is? No, my mind is not for rich. <laughs> to any god of government. <laughs> See, if I do it, then, then you can hear it in the guitar. Yes. Always hopeful you're discontent. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know changes are permanent. Down, down, down. But changes. Down, down, down. <laughs> Man, Rush sounds really different. Than Rush. <laughs> you know that if you, you don't put your fingers up at the top there, you're not actually making any noise. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was better the other way. <laughs> this better one's across the room. <laughs> it was better with no attempt at chords or strings. <laughs> Oh, Lordy. You know where I, I think this. that guitar sounded best? <laughs> when it was hanging, hanging on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome back, folks, to the horror show with Brian Keene. I am, of course, your host, Brian Keene. Joined, uh, you've heard them all already Matt Wilderson. Ahoy, hoy. Dave Thomas. Hello. Mary San Giovanni. Hi there. Professor. Mary San Giovanni, we, we should <laughs> we should clarify. And of course, Dungeon Master 77.1. Hi there. Um, we hope you enjoyed last week's episode, which featured both Brian Hodge and Jeff Strand. I know a lot of people did because they told us so online. Uh, we promised you that this week's episode would focus on the latest allegations regarding uh, comic publisher. And I use publisher in quotations. <laughs> Terrific Productions, LLC, and their president, Andrew Rev, and their editor, Robert Shepard. Um, but this week's episode is not going to spend two hours on those allegations. I can sum it up in, 
in one sentence. And and Dungeon Master, you're twelve, so you you know all the dirty words by now, right? Most of them. Yes. Most of them. Okay. Maybe you'll learn some <laughs> new ones today. Maybe not. Uh, Andrew Rev is a shithead, and his editor Robert Shepard is a shithead. And if you willingly work with either of them, chances are you will not be pleased. <laughs> <laughs> There's two hours, folks, right there for you. Um, you, you know, I we've reported, of course, on terrific productions at length on this show before, as we've reported on other bad actors in this industry at length on this show before, and we've done that for six and a half years. Um, but we're not going to do it today. It's time for others to step up and do that. Now, I thought because Terrific Productions was, at the time, mostly preying on Comicscape-affiliated creators, that perhaps Comicscape would do it. They have their own news sources. They have, uh, what is it, Bleeding Fool and Bounding Into Comics or Bounding Into Comicscape, yeah, something like yeah. that. Um, you know, if if the rest of the the entertainment media won't report on it. Maybe they would since their people were the ones primarily being targeted. No, instead they're doing some multi seven part thing about how Alex DeCampi is a terrible person. I could have told you that. <laughs> and I wouldn't have needed seven, seven multiple parts. Alex DeCampi is a horrible person in my opinion, regardless of, of where you stand politically. Um, but no, they haven't done it. Uh, for the record, fuck Comics Gate. I think we've said that on this I show before. Yeah. I think we should say it one last time. Sure. Uh, but you know, fuck Alex DeCampi, too, as far as that goes. Um, we're not going to cover Terrific Productions because what we didn't know last week was uh, today is going to be our final episode of The Horror Show with Brian Keene. However, it doesn't mean we're quite going away. Uh, so let's talk about that a little bit. Um we had a great run. Dave, would you agree you've been here since the beginning? Yes, absolutely. A great run. Uh, yep, but yep. It, it has become clear to me that the time has come. Uh, with each passing year, this show has become more and more popular, and that's great. Uh, it means we get the big guests, and we have been. But with that popularity comes a lot more work and a lot more headaches and a lot more time away from writing. Uh I did not get into this industry to be a, a, a podcaster. I got in this industry to get away from the microphone. Um, and I, I, every year, I find myself writing less and less and less. Now, I understand the role that this show plays in your lives, listeners. Uh, Hillary Monahan said this week, she said, quote, you're an important voice and the community will miss you. And Christopher Golden followed up on that. And he says, you've done a lot of good with the horror show. That includes the, I'm sorry, uh, Dave, as we were recording this, in a weird moment of synchronicity, the lawnmower man walked by the yes. window. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I got distracted. Uh, for, for newer listeners who don't know what we're referring to, we started this show in an apartment complex, and there were, uh, the, every time Dave and I would hit record in Coop, Back then, Coop was with us. Every time we'd hit record, the lawnmower would start up outside. But apparently, he's not mowing today. He was just dropping something off. Anyway, Christopher Golden <laughs> said, he said, you've done a lot of good with the horror show, brother. That includes respect for the history of the genre and lifting up new generations of writers. The constant melee of social media is poisonous, and maybe it doesn't need the oxygen you give it. But the other stuff, it does, end quote. But here's the thing, as I explained to Chris and as my co-host can back me up, if you're going to do a podcast that, at least in part, focuses on fairly presenting news that impacts the horror genre and the industry, mm -hmm. then you're going to have to give oxygen to some of that poisonous stuff. Uh, all of us can attest, over the last six years, we've reported on sexual predators in the industry like Eddie Berganza and Ed Kramer. We've reported on unscrupulous con artist publishers, mm -hmm. like the aforementioned Terrific Productions. Uh, we've reported on bad actors in the film industry, in the comic industry, in the publishing industry. Um, we've done that 
because in some cases we were the only ones doing it. Those stories were considered too big to talk about. And in some cases, uh, we did it to back the coverage of other news organizations like Bleeding Cool, like uh, independent journalist Nick Hanover, who we just had on the show, you know, uh, last month or two months ago. Um, like This Is Horror, um, you know, we had a responsibility to report on those things, but th that's the problem. When you give oxygen to the poisonous stuff, it slowly takes your own oxygen away. And lately, this whole year, really, I've been having trouble breathing. Uh, and I know Dave has, and I know Mary has, and Matt, I know it impacts you. And Dungeon Master, I know it impacts you, too, because you see how stressed and frustrated Mary and I get. Um, and the most recent example is the, the toxicity that continues to spill out of the Matt Hayward, Poltergeist Press, Kelly Owen, et cetera, all debacle. Um, it, it has poisoned the air irreversibly here in the horror show at Brian Keene Studios. There's a very small group of people who have simply made it unbearable. Uh, this very small group of people believe that the main actors were treated unfairly and that this podcast, rather than their own actions, is to blame for everything that happened. All right, so let's clarify this once and for all. It wasn't me or this podcast who originally harassed these women. It wasn't me or this podcast who has continued to harass them. It wasn't me or the podcast who created multiple fake social media accounts to further engage in harassment of them. It wasn't me or the podcast who at one point had one of those fake social media profiles falsely accuse another writer of harassment, tag the women he allegedly harassed, only to have that claim then refuted by the women who it supposedly happened to. It wasn't me or the podcast who has continued to berate people in private. And it wasn't me or the podcast who made and continues to make demands of people in private. It wasn't me or the podcast who did any of that. But it has become increasingly clear to all of us here that these people will not stop. Some do it publicly. Some do it behind the scenes, and they think they're behind the scenes, but they're not. All any of them have had to do at any point during this, if their apologies were meant, was to be quiet for a moment and leave people alone. But they don't seem to know how to do that. And I'm tired of it. And the victims are tired of it. And God knows the general public and this genre and this industry and you, the listeners of this show, are tired of it. So, no more podcast. If you won't be quiet, then we will. And now you have nothing more to harass people about. If you think we treated you unfairly on this show, well, guess what? No more show. So now you got nothing to complain about, right? But you still will. Now, I, I should be clear. The whole Kelly Poltergeist Press thing, it isn't the only reason that we've made this choice. Uh, Dave has been debating this choice, and he's going to talk about that here in a bit. Uh, but in truth, I've been dancing around this decision for at least a year. Uh, we thought about it long and hard. Giggity. <laughs> Mary's so upset by us ending that she missed her final gig. I'm sorry, I missed my giggity. <laughs> I set it up for you, you missed it. Um, you know, when when Armand, our dear friend Armand, uh, did some changes at, at the Project Entertainment Network, and, and we talked about whether to stay there or go out on our own, we thought about ending the show. And Armand told me in, in private, in confidence, he said he was really surprised that I didn't take the opportunity to just cut and end. But I, I didn't want to do that. Uh, I suspected that there would be some big news stories this year, and there were. 
Um, I wanted to give voice to those. Uh, you know, I, I knew the HWA thing, the insurance thing. I knew that was being worked on in private. I, mm-hmm. I'd hoped we'd be able to announce that. And thank God we were able to last week. Um, yeah, I knew we had that that Joe Hill, Chris Golden episode coming up. And I really wanted to do that because um, I don't think well, people get to hear me relaxed every week. I know you think I'm on for the microphone, and I am on for the microphone, but Mary and Dave and Matt and Dungeon Master can contest. This is pretty much how I am off microphone as well. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's just exaggerated for effect, because if you haven't figured it out after six years of listening to this show, I tend to exaggerate a lot for effect. <laughs> um, what? <laughs> you know. So... Great news. Great news. Um, but yeah, we've, we've struggled with it. This podcast, uh, again, I, I don't want people to go on the internet and say that, you know, it was, it was Kelly Owen and Matt Hayward who ruined the, the podcast. That's not the case. This, the toxicity that continues to spill out of that situation was the final straw for me. Okay. But the moment I got pissed off and said, fuck it, I'm going to end the podcast, it was like a weight went off my shoulders. I haven't had trouble with my blood pressure all week. I haven't had, you know, there's not been a sign of hypertension. Um, I have laughed more. I've written more. Um, so I, I don't want people going after them online and say, it's, it's your fault, Brian W. Picard. I mean, look, that guy wanted his 15 minutes of fame, and then he wanted another 15 minutes of fame. And then when things quieted down, he decided he wanted another 15 minutes of fame. He got it. Now he can go back to obscurity. Now he can go back to eating cats or whatever it is he does. Yay. Um, It's not the only reason. This podcast, when Dave and Coop and I started this, it used to take one work day. Okay. In our second year, it started to take two work days. In our third year, it started to take three work days. Uh, as Dungeon Master's mom pointed out to me this morning when we were having coffee, she said, you know, because Dungeon Master and her live here with us, she said she sees now the toll it takes on Mary and I. We're working on this podcast seven days a week, whether consciously or subconsciously, we are working on this show. Um. This is absolutely the right decision. It sucks. It's hard. But as I said, I instantly felt a weight vanish from my shoulders the moment I said it out loud. Um, you know, and and people who I respect and look up to, people who I want to be, like Joe R. Lansdale and F. Paul Wilson and David Scow, they have, you know, they have communicated to me, this is the right decision. As Joe very deftly put it. This is the right decision, and he spelt right, W-R-I-T-E. Message received, boss. I got it. Um, You know, and uh, it is the right decision. Um, Hillary and Chris are both right, however, in that this show serves other important purposes, namely giving a platform to other voices, particularly marginalized voices, and shining a spotlight on the genre's history. We have done that for six and a half years. Many of the writers you enjoy reading now, particularly marginalized writers, you first discovered from this show, okay? And I'm not saying that to be arrogant. I'm not tooting a horn. I'm saying it because it's a fact, okay? But now there are other shows that are doing that. Uh, Ladies of the Fright, you know, Necrocasticon, This Is Hard. There's a whole bunch of podcasts that are doing that now, and that's great. You know, um, I want to continue doing that as well, because those things don't take my oxygen away. I can breathe when I do those things. So while the horror show with Brian Keen, Keen is indeed ending with today's episode, it doesn't mean that I personally am going to stop giving a platform to other voices and talking about the genre's history. OK, and for you, the listener. It means you should not unsubscribe to The Horror Show. If you're listening to us on Apple or Spotify or wherever, stay subscribed. And here's why. 
I'm going to start doing live streams on YouTube. Okay. And in those live streams, I'm not going to report the news. I'm not going to talk about whatever toxic, terrible thing is happening that week. Instead, I'm going to spotlight writers and I'm going to talk about our genre's history. Okay. Those will be live streamed. Uh, the very first live stream is going to be a horror show with Brian Keene after party. It's going to be hosted by none other than Stephen Kozanowski. It's going to take place September 26th. That's a Saturday. It's going to feature myself, Mary, Matt, Dave, Phoebe, and it's going to feature balloons. Because it should. Yes. Inspired by each of us. Balloons that people can purchase. That's so cool. And if you're, if you're far out of state, there may be an option. We can't ship balloons in the mail, but there may be an option. We are looking into balloon kits. So you can get your, your Earthworm Gods balloon. You can get your Ice Bat balloon. <laughs> there nice. may even be a Fire Lord HD balloon. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Wow. A Sour Frog balloon. Yes. He's, he's tickled, right? Yeah, this is good awesome. news, right? Wow. Okay, so so what you'll do is you'll go to my YouTube channel and we're gonna we're gonna treat it as the final listener mailbag. Okay, you can ask Dave, Matt, Mary, myself, Phoebe, Dungeon Master will be there in chat. Obviously not on camera, but you can ask us questions. What's life been like since you ended the podcast? Okay, we're gonna do a, a listener mailbag hosted by Kazanuski, September twenty sixth. It's a Saturday, so you watch it on YouTube. Ask your question live, get it answered live, but. If you were working or whatever, Matt will engineer it and it will show up wherever you listen to the Hard Show with Brian Keene. So stay subscribed. Okay. The other reason you want to stay subscribed, I'm not going to kill off the archives. Six and a half worth years worth of shows. With some incredible stuff. With some incredible stuff, but it's also an absolute snapshot of genre history. Mm -hmm. If it happened in our industry in the last six and a half years, it is on this show. It's talked about on this show. You know, there's things like Jack Ketchum's final interview that I would be a monster if I deprived the people in this industry of that. Uh, so all the archives are going to stay up. I'm going to pay to keep them up online and for personal reasons as well. You know, a, a listener, I think it was Ben Martin, pointed out on Twitter, they've gotten to hear Dungeon Master grow up on this show, you know. You, you were a little kid. You were six years old. Now you're 12. Um, and, and they've seen you develop your own personality and your own creativity. I want that to be, very selfishly, I want that to be available for me. I want it to be available for Dungeon Master. One, you know, 50 years from now when I'm gone, I want them to be able to go online and, and tell the grandkids, here's what your grandpa and I used to get up to <laughs> for 80,000 listeners every week, you know. Um so all of that is still going to be there. So don't unsubscribe from the horror show. Okay. All those old shows are still going to be there and there will occasionally be new content posted, but it will not be in this format. There's not going to be the opening theme music. You're not going to have Mary going, Woohoo! you're not going to have Dave go into a 20 minute segue about the grocery store. I might still go woohoo in the background. I'm going to lock you out of the, the YouTube <laughs> You know, you're, you're not going to hear Matt groaning in annoyance at whatever we've done. Um, it's just going to be me and an author, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I'll let you know our very first author is going to be David J. Scow. Woohoo! Uh, he was going to be a surprise appearance here on the show. Oh. Um, I said, well, let, let's do it on YouTube. Uh, David will be followed by Gabino Iglesias. Mm-hmm. Tim Wagner, mm -hmm. Cena Paleo, mm -hmm. West Southern and Summer Cannon, mm -hmm. Stephen Graham Jones. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of interviews left to come. But they're going to be sporadic. Uh, I'm going to do these semi-regular because, as I said, I don't want to be tied to a schedule. I want to write. Right. I'm a writer. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, they'll all be on, and, and they won't have to share the spotlight with whatever – whatever terrible fucking thing happened in the industry that week. Um, so that's, what's going to happen. Um, 
I don't know what else to say. Uh, people asked about Defenders Dialogue and the Brian King Radio Network. Defenders Dialogue is going to continue. That has always brought me joy. It has never impacted my writing. Chris and I are going to continue to end, to to record it. Matt will continue to be paid to engineer it. It will still go up weekly. Um, the Brian Keen Radio Network, I, I am, however, going to shut down. It just doesn't make sense for Mary or for Matt to have to be tied to that when, when the flagship show isn't here anymore. So now Mary can sell her own ads and Matt can sell his own ads and they can, they can do whatever they want. And I'm going to shut down the radio station, too, because, quite frankly, that's starting to become a lot of work. I don't want it to get to the point like the horror show where it just it annoys me. Um, I'm going to let everybody else talk here in a minute. People are like, geez, 20 minutes in and nobody else has said a word. But I do want to I want to list my thank yous. Uh, I want to thank every single guest who has appeared on this show over the last six and a half years. Well, maybe not every single guest. (laughs) Kevin Strange turned out to be rather unpleasant afterwards. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. There have been some other guests who, who obviously, uh, in hindsight, yeah, I wish we hadn't given them oxygen. But for the most part, I want to thank every guest. Um, I want to thank Project I Radio, who hosted us our first year. I want to thank Armand and Shelly Rosamelia at the Project Entertainment Network and all of our sister shows on that network. Uh, who put up with our nonsense through years two through five. Armand and Shelly, I don't know how many times people threatened to sue you. Um, hopefully people aren't still doing that, although I guess they could if they discover an old show. But Well, if they can't figure out how to, turn, how to figure out <laughs> the volume to make the show louder, yeah. it may not be nice that you're not with them. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, you know, but seriously, Armand and Shelly, major love and props to you. Uh, and I want to thank you, Dave, and you, Mary, and you, Matt, and you, Dungeon Master, and Coop, and Phoebe, who uh, aren't here live, but will be joining us later in the show. Um, but most especially, I want to thank you, the listeners. It has absolutely been my pleasure. Now, I know you just got done hearing me say how much this sucks, and how much I'm tired of it, and how I need to do this for my own peace of mind and self-care, but it's... It has very much been my pleasure to bring you this show every week. Not so much when we had to talk about terrible things, but when we talked about good things, I like that very much. I, I want to thank you for inviting us into your homes and your cars every week, for taking us with you on your commute and taking us with you to college and everywhere else. Uh, I want to thank you for allowing me to do something that for a very long time did, in fact, bring me joy. I hope it brought you some as well. And that's really all I have to say. I think we should start with Dave, age before beauty. <laughs> well, I win then. <laughs> so, no, I, Dave, you've been here since episode one. You, right. me, you know, for new listeners, th- this show came about Dave and, and Jeff Cooper and JF Gonzalez and myself were sitting in Coop's kitchen talking about starting a podcast. Um, it was it was J.F. Gonzalez's idea. Uh, he did not live to see it come to fruition, but Coop, Dave, and I did it. Uh, you know, Coop eventually he had obligations; he had to bow out. Um, but Dave's been here, other than you know his his stint with cancer when he was off for a while. He's been here since the beginning. So yes, Dave, it is your turn, and I'm not going to interrupt for the first time in six and a half years. I'm not going to interrupt. I'm going to let you talk. I'm not going to try to move the show along. That's good because I have a lot to say. Take it um, away, Dave. Okay. I actually typed up notes for this so I wouldn't forget anything. Um, so. Wait. Just a little musical comment. Dave, I am going to interrupt one time just to say that I think it's only right that after we record today, this guitar should go home to you. Yeah, I, I'm very honored to to have that guitar, and uh, I will post a video on YouTube of me playing it in tune, just so people can experience <laughs> that. Um, you know, so um, no, it's um, Brian referred to this. I'm going to start off. Um, you know, I've been doing this show, you know, six and a half years. We were coming up in year seven. Next year will be year seven. Um, I had been dis- 
discussing mainly with Phoebe, who actually Phoebe's name is Dina. Let's just you know get that out there. Um, <laughs> it's the last show; it doesn't matter anymore. She used to work at a school, and she didn't want people uh, knowing that she was occasionally on this podcast where we would talk about really screwed up stuff. So uh, that's how that came about. But uh, you can you can still refer to her as Phoebe. That's fine. But uh, you know we're like, yeah, we don't have to keep this charade going anymore. So um, <laughs> so anyway. Um, I've been talking to her, and, and uh, I was planning on probably leaving the show after episode 300, which would have probably been in January. Um, there, there's a couple reasons why. Number one, I, like I said, I've been at it for seven years, and I just, you know, <laughs> I feel like I'm repeating myself sometimes, or you know, it's 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 not like it's not fun because it's fun, and uh, I, and I'll get into that later. But it's just here's the thing: I I'm not well. Okay, like seriously. Um, you know, if you listen to the show at all and, you know, I can't imagine like a new listener would come and listen to the last episode, but Hey, maybe you never know. Uh, so, you know, I had cancer last, I was diagnosed last year. Uh, I am convinced that I actually have had it since 2018 because that's when my symptoms started showing up. They eventually figured out was the cancer. Uh, basically two years ago, uh, in September this month, I was in Germany and I fell down slash passed out twice. And, uh, looking back on it. That's what would happen to me from the eternal bleeding from my tumor, which at the time, you know, nobody had any idea of a tumor. But that's where it started and it just progressed from there. So it took them almost a year to figure out what was wrong with me, but at least they did. But, uh, you know, so I had, you know, chemo radiation and just endless hospital stays. And and then, you know, in February, I had my stomach removed because the tumors were in my stomach. Um, so I've had to recover from that. Uh, so you combine that with the fact that I go in the hospital, I come out and the world goes to shit. Um, you know, and we're all affected by this, but it's affecting us all differently. And, uh, well, I have pretty much been on lockdown for two years because it really, like I said, this, these symptoms started almost two years ago. Obviously I have not been anywhere, uh, you know, other than doctor appointments since February, other than to record the podcast a couple times like we did. So, uh, that, that, that situation weighs on my mind. Uh, Dina worked at a school, like I said, as a private school, they basically shut down in March and back then, I, I don't know what the plan is now, obviously, but they, they, they eliminated her job because they're like, well, we're either not going to reopen or if we do, we're not going to have food service. And a lot of private schools around our area and I guess around the country are, are doing the same thing. If they go back, they're not going to have a cafeteria to keep the kids from gathering. So when you're the cafeteria, you know, food service person. Kind of, you know, no job. So uh, she's been taking some uh, online classes to, to move into the HR field. Uh, so, you know, she's been busy with that. Uh, I've been busy trying to recover. But, you know, and I've talked about this in the show. This is not a secret. I suffer from depression and anxiety and many other horrible things. So, you know, between cancer and, and you know, the, the world situation, our financial situation, which is not good because neither one of us are working, I'm incapable of holding down a job at this point. I'm not well enough. To, to be out of the house working it's, it, it would not function. So, uh, you know, my recovery is going way slower than I thought I was going to. Uh, I, I'm certainly better than I was six months ago, but it's, it's a long slog and we still don't know if I'm cancer free. I have another scan coming up probably next week, uh, to, to see what's going on because the last scan I had, they saw what they called an anomaly on my lungs, uh, three to four millimeters in size. Uh, so, uh, they need to check and see if that's turned into something or if that's just scarring that I had when I had pneumonia. I had a really bad case of pneumonia, um, pneumonia, pneumonia a decade ago. So uh, we'll see. But like I said, I'm not, I've not been cleared for that, you know. So uh, there's a lot going on with me, and I got to tell you that it, yeah, I love doing the podcasts and and stuff. But doing these serious news stories, uh, the more we've done them, the, the worse they've made me feel, um, you know. And and I don't like that feeling, that mental feeling of just doom and depression, and it, it's it's not good for me. Um, and, uh, you know, as I said, if we were being paid (laughs) to do these news reports, like real reporters, you know, I think if we were all getting $50,000 a year plus, you know, to report on these things, maybe we wouldn't care as much, but I, you know, for free, uh, it's not, it's not what I want to do. I, you know, I've, I've said to Dina that cancer has changed me and I think it really has. Um, and I, I don't want to, to do these sad stories and what I really don't want is and this is not just recently. This has happened since we ever started doing news stories. I'm just sick of being taken to task for us just reporting the news and then we're getting blamed like we did it. We've been called liars. We've been threatened with lawsuits. 
you know, it, it's just it's on and on and on. And I'm tired of getting sucked into internet drama, especially you know that we have nothing to do with. You know, you, you people want to fight with each other, fight with each other. Why are you sucking into us into this? I mean, I just I don't get it. But it just it's more stress on me that I don't need. You know, um, am I happy the show's ending? No, I'm not. And we'll get into that that too. But at the same time, you know, I'm like I think it's better health wise, mentally health wise. For for all of us, I just think it's you know I can't speak for Matt and Mary. I can speak for Brian because he already said it. You know, doing these things it takes a toll on you, and it really does. You know, um, I have a abusive past where I was abused, and that's all I'm going to say. You don't get any details. Sorry, I know that you know we're supposed to share everything on Facebook, but no. You know, so a lot of times these stories affect me very emotionally. So and, and they just get to me, and I I just I don't want to do it anymore. I realize it's important work. I need to realize somebody has to talk about it. I realize that no one is likely to take up the gauntlet after we leave and do these kinds of stories because they're really hard to do. And it requires a lot of work and a lot of effort and a lot of research and hearing horrible, shitty stories from people who don't want to go on the record, but they you know, want to tell you anyway, just so you got some background. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just, I don't know that I am mentally capable of doing this anymore, you know? So, like I said, I was probably going to leave the show and become like an occasional contributor, like a, like a Lombardo or a Dina uh, after 300. But it doesn't matter now. And uh, I, I know Brian has been thinking about this for at least a year, if not more. Um, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm not happy about this because I'm going to miss this like so much. You don't have no idea. But I understand why. Um, you know, I've said before that this is absolutely the best creative thing I have ever been involved in in my life. And it's absolutely true. I've been in the entertainment industry most of my life. I worked in Hollywood. I made TV commercials. I used to do mock-up products for companies. I worked at a game company. I did marketing there. You know, I've written over a hundred product reviews for various magazines back in the nineties when magazines were still a thing. Um, you know, I, you know, I've done music, done video, like I've done a ton of different stuff. And by far, this is the most satisfying thing I've ever done. Some of the most fun I've ever had in my life. And you know, I just I, I'm I'm so happy that I did it, and I'm glad the archives are staying up because I think we did a lot of important work. I think there's a ton of important interviews. I think there's a ton of genre history, and I think it's really cool that it will exist as a document of something that I did when I'm gone. And the way things have been going, I don't know how much more time I have left on Earth. You know, it, it sounds terrible, but it's the truth. You know, uh, you know, none of us know. You know, for the most part, you know, a bear could come here right now and eat me. You know, what am I going to do? So you never know. So. But, um, you know, so that's, you know, it, it just, I'm, I'm glad they're going to be out there, you know, and, uh, you know, so I have, you know, I've, I've had a great time on the show. I met so many really cool people I've never met otherwise. Um, you know, I got to rant about the grocery store and healthcare <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, here's the thing. When we started doing this show, you know, and we were talking about, it, you got Brian, who's a great writer. You got Coop, who's a great writer. You had Jesus, who's a great writer. You have me that's pretty much an idiot. So I'm like, hmm, how am I going to fit into this? I know. If I can make them laugh, that that's – if I'm making them laugh in the room, the, there's probably people at home laughing. <laughs> you know, that, that was how I started doing this because if there's nothing I'm, I'm not I'm, – if there's something I'm good at, it's making people laugh. I've always been really good at this. I've always been told – I was told when I were, worked in L.A., I used to get told from other comedians, like, do you, do, you really should do stand-up because I would be in the, the edit bay just you know, talking. But see, I don't do jokes like, oh, what about that airline food? That's not me. I have to have something to react to, which is like why this has been perfect, you know, because Brian will make some amazing statement like, you know, Mr. Robot's a good TV show, and that gives me a good 10 minutes to, to yell at him, you know, which is <laughs> fine music. You know, it basically the show is, is kind of – especially in the beginning, it was basically what would happen with me and Brian and Coop. When we didn't have microphones, yeah, yeah it was the same exactly thing. Exactly it. Yeah, yeah. So you know, it, it worked out well. But my, my goal was always to, it was for a while because it's just me and Brian in, in his apartment. I would just try to get him to laugh. And I'm like, well, if I get him to laugh, other people are gonna laugh. And then when you know Mary came along, once she decided she could, you know, talk to me, you know, you know, because there's that whole history there. Uh, it was the same thing, you know. And and I get, and then Matt, you know, adding Matt to the show, you know, it is it just it's been great. So I've had a lot of laughs and. You know, I got to rant about the grocery stores people enjoy. And, you know, I occasionally got to talk about uh, my passion, which is music. So, you know, I got to mention a lot of music that Brian Keene would never listen to. And I got to talk about TV shows that Brian Keene will never watch. So, you know, you know, hopefully other people will. So uh, now I'm just making fun of Brian because it's fun. Um, <laughs> as, as I've said in the past, I don't know if I've ever said this to you guys, but sometimes when I'm on the show, I, I, I have felt like I'm Steve Vai and the Beatles. 
because again, you're all writers and I don't write. I've written nonfiction, but I don't write fiction. And I, I, I felt sometimes like, you know, I, I'm like the odd man out because you guys will be talking about writing and I'm like, mm, yeah, I don't really have anything to say here. And, you know, and, and imposter syndrome is totally a thing. And it's totally a thing with me. I, everyone on earth can line up and tell me you're doing a good job and I'm still not going to believe it. It's just how I am. My brain has been wired up like this for reasons I'm not going to get into. Uh, so, and, and the other thing is, is, you know, I, I started going to horror conventions, you know, it's horrifying. I don't know what year it's the first one. I went to 2006. Maybe I really don't remember, but, um, you know, especially when, when I'd start to go with like, you know, Brian and, and some other people, uh, people wouldn't talk to me. And, and this is not just a writing thing. This is an entertainment industry thing. Most people in this industry, these industries, you're only important to them if, if you can make them more important or more money, you yeah. know? And since I'm not a writer and I don't own a publishing company, a lot of people wouldn't talk to me when I went to, went to shows, which is sort of frustrating. Um, I mean, as time went on, I go to more of these, you know, people would, but I noticed once I was on this podcast, oh, suddenly I'm entertaining and, and interesting and, and people that have never spoken to me will come up and talk to me, you know? So part of me is like, well, I, I guess I'm going to go back to being totally unimportant, <laughs> you know, now that the podcast is gone, which is kind of sad, but you know, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, but that's, that's just part of my, my thought process. Um, you know, so, you know, I, 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 thought about some stuff that happened on the show that, you know, and we've done almost 300 shows. So it's, I can't even remember all of them, but just, just some of the things that, that were, I, I were cool moments for me was like, uh, we were sitting in a hotel room with Tom Monadone, F. Paul Wilson, Ed Lee, and Urbancic was, uh, John Urbancic was our bartender. Yes. <laughs> you know, and I had never met Ed Lee before. That was like the first time I met him. Uh, Tom and Paul, I met at, at, at uh, at Nikon, um, so, you know, and I, I didn't know free will, but that was just a cool evening. Uh, the first time, I mean, I actually thought, you know, we remarked on this. We recorded the first episode and we're both like, that was actually pretty good, <laughs> you know, because we had no idea. But to me, the first time the show was really came into focus where like, this is what this could be was the about episode 10, the first time Kristen Jensen was on, which is, if you've never heard it, it's two and a half hours of insanity. It just, it's, in, it's insane. There's, there's conversations about it cocaine and goats in space it, it's just delightful but it was like you know because brian always said it was kind of a combination the show was a combination between uh inside the actor's studio and the howard stern show you know yep. we were yep. big fans of, <laughs> uh, minus the strips you know so um that i my favorite parts of the stern show was always when the the core gang you know, howard robin fred jackie you know whoever else is there, would just sit around and and torment each other and and talk about stupid shit that was always my favorite thing about the show is the core cast and i you know, we as our show went on, that kind of became our show too, which made me really happy because some of the best moments were just us doing random stuff. You know, so uh, obviously the you know the Maurice Barajas episode sticks out is still one of the greatest interviews ever. Uh, the telethons that we did, you know, people give a shit about how quote unquote evil we are. We did a lot of good too. We raised thirty thousand dollars for Scares It Cares over two telethons. Mm -hmm. You know, plus many other promotions for 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 that charity and, and other things. Um, those telethons, while they were exhausting, I, I wouldn't trade a second of them for anything. Um, in my mind, the first one was more fun, I think, because, you know, we had no idea what was going to happen. <laughs> you know, the second time we knew it was going to be stressful. So the first time we we're just like, I, I don't know, you know, we're in a hotel room in Cockeysville, Maryland. You know, let's see what happens. You know, but they were they were so much fun. And uh, it was such a great time with those. Uh Another great moment was uh, Brian Knight calling Phoebe a goddamn ray of sunshine after one of our Dave and Phoebe holiday episodes. And then Brian Knight wrote a story about me and Phoebe at a cat convention and put it in a short story collection, which, as far as I know, is the only horror show fan fiction. Uh, but, you know, I, we just I just love that. You know, uh, we got to do the live shows and panels at, at Scares of Cares and we got to show the Fast Zombies Suck and talk about it. Uh, which was just a great thing. So you have to remember, uh, unlike these guys who are, are famous and important, I am, I am neither. So for me to be asked to be on a panel or, or you know, to, to talk in front of people uh, was actually a really cool thing. You know, I'm not jaded like, oh, I've been on panels. I'm sick of it. No, I, 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 I really like doing it. And I hope I continue to get invited occasionally in the future. Um, people coming up and telling us either in person or through or Twitter or whatever, how much the show means to them. Um, there have been stories, and I'm not going to say any names, and because I also get the the details wrong. But I, there's been people like, yeah, I was in a hospital for you know cancer or whatever it was, and I started listening to the show from the beginning, and it just that was my entertainment while I was you know recovering from surgery, or you know I, I was 
you know, recovering alcoholic. And I listened to your show to, to give me something to do while I was, I was going through that treatment or just, you know, a lot of stories like that, or just, you know, Hey, I, I listened to you on the show and I went out and bought that, uh, Devin Townsend album and it's fucking amazing. And I'm like, well, of course it is. I like it, but no, seriously, like when people that, that, that made my day, you know, seriously, I know like on the show, I always ran about money, but Hey, you know, money can be exchanged for goods and services as Homer Simpson said. So, you know, it's important, but does honestly, you, you, when people were like, you know, Hey, I listened to the show and I really liked it or just anything, you know, or how much it should means to you or, you know, you come to our, one of our live things and, you, and you're laughing at, at stupid stuff we're doing. It, it was such a good feeling. And I, I'm so happy that, you know, I could help making you happy. Um, I, like I earlier said, I got more respect from the horror community than I ever gotten before from being on this podcast. Uh, I hopefully will come out of this with good friends I never had before. We'll see. Uh, the, honestly, the show that to me, other than me and Mary derailing the show, which is still my favorite thing ever, because um, <laughs> Brian's head would just explode. My honestly, the favorite thing is the interviews. Brian is an amazing interviewer. In fact, I swear to you, I, I'm not saying this to suck up to the guys. The absolute truth. I think the only entertainment interviewer that is any that's better than Brian is Howard Stern. Well, that's thank the, you, my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. seriously, because Brian's like, well, Howard Stern. Howard Stern. Like people always, like think about the stripper stuff. People don't realize what a great interview is if you never really sat down and listened to it. that guy's amazing. Brian is very, very close to being uh, uh, even more amazing. Like seriously, some of the interviews we've had on the show are just uh, phenomenal. You know, I fully credit Stern and you know Richard Christie and I have talked about this in in private. Uh, I I I grew up listening to Stern. You know, on DC 101. And and then when he moved to New York, there was a there was a drought. But then he was soon syndicated and I could listen to him again. I my entire interview pattern and structure is is inspired by Stern. So that means a lot. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, it's 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 absolutely true, people. Um, So, uh, I mean, again, you know, I'm talking about good things here. Uh, you know, so there's been so many times that we've been just been laughing at something stupid until I like injure myself. I mean, you know, especially the last two years with all the bullshit health stuff I've been dealing with, the the last were necessary. Um, I I certainly can't go with my favorite mentions and not say fake Alex Jones. But, <laughs> you know, fake Alex Jones versus Elmo really is would be in my all time top ten. I mean, that just. And again, it was all not planned. It just randomly happened. And it just, it's amazing. But, uh, and honestly, and this is the absolute truth, you people, and I count the, the staff and everybody that listens, you kept me from losing my mind and putting a gun in my mouth during all this cancer bullshit. And it's the absolute truth. Uh, you know, I, 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 I don't think if I had this show and all the people who would reach out to me, all the people who donated to the GoFundMe, who bought me and Dina things on Amazon from a wish list. Uh, who people who randomly just sent me money, you know, uh, you know, it's like here, just, you know, I know you, you got bills and, uh, you know, I, you know, I stole bills. It's, it's really bad. Uh, people please learn how to vote. So maybe we can get some healthcare in this country cause it, it's not good. Uh, take it from me. Um, so, but honestly, you guys have all been a huge, huge help. I do have some regrets. Uh, we still there. Heard a weird yep, noise. We're here. Okay. Okay. So uh, we never got to do a cupcake Christmas in Christmas Town. That was a going to be a uh, a audio play that I had written for the 2018 Dave and Phoebe Holiday Spectacular, <laughs> where uh, Phoebe runs a cupcake shop in a, in a small town, and uh, the mean old man Brian Keene comes and he's going to buy the cupcake building, and, and then things happen. And uh, I was going to get as many people as we could to do voices in it. You know, it, it was actually really funny. You know, it was basically a parody of this god awful Hallmark Channel movies he used to watch. But then I got sick and we never got to do it. But yeah, I don't know. It would have been great. I'm sad that we never got to do the third telethon that we planned to go to Los Angeles because uh, I got sick again. Um, I love doing the telethons. I'm sad. I don't know if we'll ever do one again. I'm probably not, but I, I, I really like doing this. I, uh, uh, I would not say never. Okay, that's what I. And think. I would not say that Los Angeles is out of the question. That's that's good, right? Right now, obviously, we ain't going anywhere. So, no. but maybe in the future. So, there's a couple of people I really want to have on the show, and it just never worked out. I want to have Chuck Wending on. We we're going to do the shed off between his writer shed and Brian's writer shed, which I thought was a funny idea. Uh, Ellen Datlow, who just because I'm a huge fan, I really like her. And the, the two people, and we planned on interviewing them. We did the LA telethon, so this really bums me out. Was uh, Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead, the guys who made, uh, you know, the, the endless and, uh, spring and, you know, I, the endless is my all time favorite horror movie. And I have many questions 
So I'm hoping someday still I get to interview these guys. Um, so I, I never got to perform music on the show or perform a song with Mary, which I always felt if we were going to do another telethon, Mary and I are going to play a song together because Mary likes to sing and I can't sing I for do. shit. So, um, and finally, our biggest disappointment. Where is our Shirley Jackson Award, Jack Arena? <laughs> Seriously. I am. Th- this is ridiculous. We, we, you know, we've done amazing work for the genre. We need to be recognized. I know there's some people on that committee that are our friends. You, you need to get him over this and get us an award. So get on it. Um, the whole committee is our friends. At I this know. Point. You, none of them right. want to give us an award. Yeah. 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 Well, Dave. So, no, I'm not done yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh no, I told you this is gonna be long. I'm sorry, but you know I well, don't get to talk. Well, we 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 have to do a we have to do a segue into our our ad because okay. we're halfway through the show and and we do have a paying ad this week. Okay. What if your cupcake skit was animated? Okay. Yeah. And then we could all do the voice acting. And if only <laughs> there was a place on YouTube where one could go. For free animation. That place is, in fact, Fire Lord HD. It's Dungeon Master 77.1's own project. Now that the horror show with Brian Keene is over, he's stepping out on his own. He's doing animation and comedy and video games and all sorts of other really awesome nonsense. Uh, go to YouTube, type Fire Lord HD, all one word, all lowercase, Fire Lord HD. You'll see it. You'll see. Uh, such animated series as Sour Frog and McBoom and, and all kinds of other ones. Um, so go there, subscribe. Uh, Dave, before you continue, Dungeon Master, you've been sitting here for over an hour. That's the longest you've ever sat in studio with us. But you're also 12. Do you need to go and do stuff? No? You're going to let Mr. Dave finish before we get to you? Yes. Because you, you can go ahead and tell us your favorites now if you want, and then and then we can excuse you to go play. No, his speech is beautiful. His speech is beautiful. Oh. Well, there Thank you go, you. Dave. Thank you very much. Oh. All right, today's uh, Thomas, part okay. two, everybody. Yes, part two. So, uh, you know, the show's ending, so what am I going to be doing? Well, there's a couple things. Uh, I had originally, in 2018, mentioned I was going to do a music podcast, and then I got sick. So uh, that that is going to happen. The original idea was me talking about my about albums and bands and things, but I realized I hate talking by myself. I'm not lying. I should have videotaped me recording my little intros to the best of every year where it would take me 10 takes to say, here's an, ep- you know, here's Brian from episode 25, you know, cause it just, I, I can't stand talking by myself. So it's going to be an interview show and uh, it's going to be interview people who are not necessarily the musicians, but to, to love music. Like, you know, it does not have a title because any title I thought of, I type into Google and it comes right up. Somebody's already using it. So uh, I, I I don't know where it's going to be hosted because it was really supposed to be a Brian Keene radio podcast or whatever it is. But I guess that's not happening anymore. So um, I'll have to. You know, that. Armand and Shelley might host it for you. Absolutely not. <laughs> I would like to make oh. money. It's Wait, not his network Master anyway. You know, Mr. Dave, it's um, it is clear that you're bad at titles as when we played D and D, your name was blank, the wizard. Well, that's because I, I couldn't find where the name was on the character sheet, and Brian said that was my name. So, um, <laughs> you have to remember that I had no idea we were going to do that today. I got there, and Brian's like, "We're playing D and D," and I'm like, "Oh, okay." But, I mean, that's still one of my my favorite things. Well, I, I I have comments for you later in the show, later in my little <laughs> list here uh, that you'll enjoy about that. So, um, but yeah, so I'm going to do a music podcast. Um, I'm also going to do – I can't remember if I talked about this in the show or not. I know I've told these guys about it. I'm going to set up a Patreon account, and for a fee – and it's going to be a low fee because I know nobody has money right now. You'll get an original song a week um, nice. so to listen to. And it, it, you know, it's gonna, I'm going to write music, so I'm going to write a song every week. Uh, that is also going to happen fairly soon. Um, I am planning on going back on Twitch and not just playing video games. Uh, I have to – I have a large collection of cameras and things here. So I'm going to set them up so I can uh, stream recording and writing music and uh, maybe working on animation and art also. So, and occasionally video games, but uh, it's just more, you know, I, I work by myself. So I'm like, well, this would be a good way to hang out with people and, and talk and, you know, things like that. So um, I'm open to being on other podcasts. I know that I had talked to two other individuals who said that they might like to do a <laughs> podcast. Uh, I'm very open to that idea as long as it's not serious because um, I can't do news anymore. Um, 
Honestly, we thought Brian was going to stop doing the show a couple of years ago, and Phoebe and I joked about doing a podcast called Kitten and, Kittens and Tasers. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, because she loves kittens and I'm I'm a terrible, evil person. And uh, I'm like, we'll get kicked off the air from Phoebe's constant usage of the word whore uh, in reference <laughs> to television shows that we watch. So, <laughs> no, it's, it's, I, 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 it was just like a joke thing. So, but again, there's these two individuals who, uh, you know, we had talked about doing a show. So hopefully that'll be, be a thing. Um, so I'm going to thank some people. If I leave you out is not intentional. I can't see your name, everybody in earth that I know. Okay. So, uh, project I radio, obviously, uh, Armand and Shelley, project entertainment network. I, I make fun of them. Mostly Armand cause it's fun, but no, they really were a big help. And, uh, so scares of cares, the whole organization, summer, and Jesse cannon, uh, summer cannon, you giving Phoebe a bottle of homemade, uh, margarita. So then she blurts out, uh, I no longer have a uterus as scares a cares panel, uh, is one of my highlights. <laughs> so, uh, Chris and Alicia stamps, uh, Rachel on Deering, Christine Morgan, Bracken McLeod, John Bowden. Oh, by the way, when I do my music podcast, I don't want to see who my first guest is, but his name's rhymes with John Bowden. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Larissa Glasser, Laura J. Hickman, Jeff Strand, Lynn Hansen, Chris Golden, Jim Moore, Ron Malfi, Wes and Katie Southard, Chris Enderline, who did those awesome ice packs, ice bath stickers for me, and I'm going to hire him to do people. Yes, I will announce it here. People begged in the past, there will be Meteor Notes t shirts. Woohoo! And it will, nice. there will be a shark on it. So, nice. you bitches better be buying. And, you know, I suppose <laughs> if I must, thank you, Kazanuski. So, yeah. so no, I, I, I love to pick on him. Um, honestly, the thing I'm going to miss the most is spending time with my family every week. You guys are my family. I don't have a family, uh, you know, and, and, you know, I, this is the family I've chosen. And, uh, it, like, like Dean says last night, she was, we're never going to see him ever again. And, uh, I, I hope that's not the case. Why but, uh, would that be the case? Well, just because, you know, the way the world works and, you know, we're going to be, you know, this is only an excuse, excuse to get together every week and we don't have that anymore. And I would hope it wouldn't be, you know, we have some metal table we're going to give you guys. So you'll see us then if nothing else. Um, so I, I now I'm going to to talk about the people on the show. Uh, first, Dina, who's not going to hear this right now because she's a, she was going to be on the show today and technology didn't work out. She's going to record a message later for you guys. But uh, uh She'll hear this later. She, she, Dina is the love of my life. I've never been in a better relationship. We're coming up on nine years together. Um, and I would never, I would not be where I am without her. Uh, just not even just health wise, because the, you know, she has helped me, her and my ex-wife Mary, I, I would be dead without them. Absolutely. There's no way I would have gotten through this, but she supports me and, and all my crazy ideas that, that I come up with. And, uh, you know, and it helps out and, and, and it comes up with a lot of ideas. I mean, it's a lot of stuff that, and I couldn't think of anything off the top of my head, but some of the stuff that we ended up doing in the show, it was her idea. I mean, you can't forget about, you know, Phoebe unleashed, which turned into a <laughs> fairly popular segment it was just her. I just walk around scares, scares talking to people. I'm like, okay. And that, you know, people really liked it. So, you know, we're going to have to figure out a way to keep that going somehow. Um, I mean, she basically went from somebody who sat in the corner and counted how many times we all said, fuck, to, to be an important member of the show, you know, so because that was her initial job when she first was hanging out in the show. Um, I do think that we somehow have to make sure she meets Victor Laval, um, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, Victor's, Victor is uh, going to be one of the guests on the live stream. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I, I would be a terrible interviewer if I didn't at one point bring Phoebe into the live stream. Yes. On camera yes. with Victor. Right. Yes. I mean, the well, comedic value in that alone. Is, you know. <laughs> well, the other thing is he's a guest of honor at Nikon next year. Uh, and obviously they didn't have it this year. And I was signed up to go somewhere. Going. She will probably actually, she's not going to work at a school again. You know, she's decided she's done with that. So uh, she would have like a normal work schedule, hopefully. So she should be actually able to go. So, and I said, well, if you go, I just need to film you talking to him because it'll be funny. <laughs> so uh, Dungeon Master, I know you're listening. I've known you since you were born. And uh, as I watched you grow up, you're just like your dad. And honestly, that is the best compliment I can give you, you know, because your dad is amazing. Uh, you're yelling silence barbarian at your dad is we'll live <laughs> on history. It's not the funniest thing. I, I mean, I, I can't believe how funny you are. But again, you're like your dad and your dad's hilarious. So um, and, uh, you know, I love your YouTube channel. I love your creativity. And I hope I'm around long enough to, to see what you do with the cool stuff you do as you get older. Um, so it, it's been an honor to be around you. 
uh, Mike Lombardo, who was a occasional person on our show, and I'm sure he's listening today. Um, he's easily one of Mike. You're easily one of the most talented people I ever met in my life. One of the funniest. I, I'm really sorry we only ever got to do one Phoebe and Lombardo book club review show. Uh, I wish we would have kept that going because I I found another quality. Uh, I, I believe the author's name is Sandra Brown book about angels and vampires, which I think you guys would have enjoyed. So, uh, <laughs> but Mike, my, my, my message to you is is and I say this as somebody who. Uh, you know, at a young age, had some success and then was paralyzed by it. Uh, don't give up. I know that following up your first film is going to be hard as hell to do, and you're you're going to question everything you do. But don't give up. Keep at it because you're incredibly talented. Uh, I cannot compliment your your movie enough. I mean, your short movies are always great, but your, your first feature was just amazing. And I please please keep making films. Uh, Mary San Giovanni. Woo! Okay. Well, despite the fact that Mary never spoke to me until she started <laughs> dating Brian and was forced to. No. Uh, uh-huh. Right. Yeah, sure. I'm on your ruse, madam. Uh, <laughs> Mary has turned into somebody I absolutely love and one of the, the greatest people I've ever had in my life. Uh, you and Brian are perfect together. Neither one of you ever do any better. So so don't fight ever. So because okay. it's, like, it's like me and Phoebe. It's just it's it's meant to be, uh, you know, you, you came on the show. And you made the show better, mainly because you're smarter than both of us. Yeah. <laughs> um, I still remember the time that we get yelled at for doing book club without you, and everybody was pissed off because, like, uh, <laughs> we don't care what you idiots have to say. We don't hear what the professor has to say. So, uh, you know, you know, I, 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 despite you know your your somewhat questionable taste in music, <clears throat> Rush, um, <laughs> you know, I, I I've enjoyed getting to know you over the years, and, and my favorite times that I, I've had with Mary uh, are. You know, obviously when we go to conventions together, it's always good. But, but you know, when we used to record the Cosmic Shenanigans, a lot of times Brian would go off to do errands, you know, or whatever. And so we'd be by ourselves. So we'd do the show. And then we'd just sit around and talk about stupid stuff yeah. for like afterwards. And it's, it was just the best. And, uh, you know, sometimes, yeah, we were probably talking about you. And if you don't think <laughs> it's talking about you, don't be an ass hat. You know, <laughs> there you go. Good advice. And stop blaming people on the internet for things that we didn't do. You know, that, you know. <laughs> But no, Mary, I, I love Mary, and uh, you know, please don't stop talking to me now. Um, well, I love you too, Dave. Okay, uh, Coop, you know, uh, he was also a part of the show. Uh, Coop, you, you're one of my brothers. You know that. Um, he understands me, you know, which most people don't. Uh, anytime Coop has been on the show, either in the beginning or when he's come back for guests, he always makes it better. Uh, especially when Coop's on, because then we can just torture Brian. You know, if you go back to that last episode he was on last year, you know, and listen to like the last 20 or 30 minutes, that's him and Brian Brian's relationship <laughs> over the years. <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I'm so glad you, you were on the show. And again, Coop is like super, super smart. And, uh, you know, I, I, a lot of times I'm like, you know, why well, I'm on the show, I'm dopey. So, but anyway, uh, Matt Wildeson. Uh, I was a fan of yours the first time you came on with your grindcast buddies. I, I, you know, I had not known who you were or anything before that, but you, you guys were really funny. And you came back a couple of times and Brian and said, do you think we should have him in the show? And I was absolutely yes right away because I need to make the show better. And you did. Um, seriously, and this is a huge compliment, you are perhaps funnier than I am, which is, <laughs> you know, I, I don't say that lightly because there aren't many people like that. Uh, but, you know, you made the show better. Um you know, like I said, fake Alex Jones is it, so one of the funniest things I've ever heard in my life. And uh, and I have to thank you for stepping up when I got sick and keeping the show going. And because there's absolutely no way I could have done it. And uh, I consider one of Matt my very best friends now. I love Matt. I, I love his wife, too. His wife is awesome. Uh, and, and we would hang out together if the world wasn't stupid, you know. So Indeed. Hopefully it'll get better and, and we can do stuff together. Uh, so uh, then we come to uh, Brian. Brian is my best friend. Brian is my brother that I never had. Uh, he's one of the very few people on earth that always checks up on me. Uh, that you know, other than other than Dean and my ex-wife, the two people that whenever I'm in trouble always check up on me and help me if they can are Brian and my friend Della, who you guys have heard me talk about on the show. There's two people I can count on the most. But Brian, you, you've helped me so much over the last 10, 15 years, how long we've known each other. Um, Almost 20. At this yeah, point. I know. It's, it's coming up on 20. It's scary. Um, I, you know, I am honored that you allowed me to be on this show, seriously, because I was like, it, they're not going to have me on. I'm an idiot. But, you know, I you know, I went on this journey, and I'm so glad I did it. Um, the show's made my life better. 
and it's given me something to look forward to every week, like I said. And, uh, you know, like I said, I, I got to hang out with my family. You guys are my family. And uh, the last person I have to thank is, of course, Jesus Jeff Gonzalez. I, I miss him every day. There's not a day that goes by I don't think of him. Like Brian said, this show was his idea. It would have never happened without him. I wish he could have been on it. Uh, just to see the expression on his face when Brian says something dumb, because <laughs> his his facial expressions were the best. Uh, but yeah, I, I miss him. So that that's it. My final thought is is if you bastards suddenly start doing a horror show without Dave Thomas, I'm going to be really really mad. And when I die, I'm going to haunt your toasters. So <laughs> you know. fair enough. There you go. Fair All enough. right, Dave Thomas, everybody. All right, Matt, Mary, before we get to you guys, as I said, Dungeon Master has been super patient. But Dungeon Master, you had you were telling me this morning some of your favorite moments over the last six years. You want to tell the audience about those? Yeah. Uh, should yes. I do a speech? Sure. You do whatever you want. Just tell people what your favorite episodes were. And then they can go back through the archives and listen to them. Or, or you can do a speech. You can say whatever you want to say. All right. So... Wow. I can't believe I got on the show when I was like six or seven years old. And I originally, I was so surprised to find out that my father had had a radio show. And I was like, how old do you have to be to have a radio show? And I found out was, you had to be 18 years old, which was crazy. Well, can I tell you the truth now? Hmm. I like you. <laughs> you don't have to be 18 to have a podcast, but I didn't want my six-year-old. See, here's the thing: when I was when I was when I was your age, I used to have a tape recorder, okay, and I would play my my albums. I had ABBA and I had Sticks and a couple. I had the Bay City Rollers, and I would I would play those and pretend I was a DJ, and I would talk into my tape recorder and. These days, you can actually go and start an actual radio station at age six, and I couldn't have you doing that. <laughs> so, Especially if you're anything like your father. <laughs> six and a half years later, Dungeon Master, you could have had, in fact, had your own podcast. But please go ahead and continue. Um, I've met a lot of great people through the show. Matt, Dave, um, you guys have been some of the greatest people i have ever had the pleasure to know oh same goes to you buddy. Yeah, same same yeah thank you thank you you both are very funny and talented and i'm <laughs> glad that you're both starting to get better and matt i'm glad your career is really going well and dave same goes with you um but is there any guest that you want to send a shout out to? Any guest in particular that stands out? Because you've been on with, with some of the biggest names in, in the industry. Yes, I would like to challenge uh, Christian Jensen to a boxing match. <laughs> <laughs> that was an unscripted moment. Wow. <laughs> Pay per view. <laughs> that you might have to be 18. <laughs> yeah. We should talk. Yeah, about I think there's that. an age limit on that. Yeah, Christian yeah I'm Jensen. sure some coaches will overlook that. You know, <laughs> Christian yeah, Jensen right. is sort of he's sort of become your nemesis in the six years. <laughs> Hello, Christian. Your, your very first appearance on the show was in fact to holler at Christian Jensen for for cursing. You came storming, stomping into the studio, and told him to watch his language. There were children present. <laughs> Jensen's become his Newman to Jerry. <laughs> and, and Christian's last time on this show. I believe he tried to give him booze. <laughs> he, yeah, he tried to give you whiskey, if I recall correctly. <laughs> that was hilarious. And, and you got on him about that. So <laughs> I'm a child. <laughs> no, no, no. Since, since he's there in the room right now, you stopped him, Brian. Well, Dungeon Master was going to go and get well, some. No, Dungeon Master. Dungeon Master confided in me later. Dad, I want you to know I really wasn't going to drink the whiskey. <laughs> it was just for the air. It was a for funny show, bit, yeah. right? And yeah. I'm like, well, I don't think Mr. Jensen thought it was a bit. <laughs> but yes, it was a funny bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say stuff to my dad like that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Can you send us this again? <laughs> 
what about uh, what about the the episode Dave brought up where we played Dungeons and Dragons for an episode? Did you like that? Oh yeah, I actually wanna if you if you all don't mind me talking about that for a little bit. Dave <laughs> talked for an hour. Go ahead. You can, you can talk. As much. <sighs> <laughs> Look at that expression. I will miss that expression every week. Uh, uh. It wouldn't be a traditional episode, Dave, if you didn't oh, you know, know. go after us. Know. Yes. But the 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 D and D game that we played on the air. So this was around my tenth birthday. I just got done with hanging out with my friends. We went to Denny's. That was when I first discovered what Denny's was. Right. And it's actually, it's not as bad as some people say, and it's not as good as other people say, but it was... <laughs> Perfectly mediocre. De- De- Denny's was... Wow. <laughs> Remember, you don't, you don't go to Denny's because it's good, you go to Denny's because it's open. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you're hungover. <laughs> Is that something else you told your dad, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dungeon Master. Anything else? Uh, you want to? Yeah. I, I didn't talk about the D and D game. Well, talk about it. You 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 got off on a segue there about Denny's. I know, but please stop interrupting. Me. <laughs> I'm not interrupting. You know what? You're right. I I acknowledge and appreciate you pointing that out to me. You're right. I'm doing to you what I used to do to Mr. Dave for six years. And today I promised Dave I wouldn't do that, and I'm, I'm doing it to you instead. Go ahead. The <laughs> microphone is yours. Thank you. So I got my first D&D set from my mom, and I remember just – and my dad. It was amazing how they hid it from me when we went to a comic book store, and I was just – I was buying some comics, and they hid that D&D set from me. And when we got back, I found it. It was really cool, and I started working on my first campaign right away. And I remember I called it White Castle, and this is where the infamous episode of White <laughs> Castle began, uh, featuring Keenan the Barbarian, Lily. <laughs> She's an elf, but, but the Barbarian called her Halfling, and Blank, the Wizard. <laughs> It, that episode was a lot of fun. It really, it was one of my favorite memories of D and D and my whole experience on the show. Just playing D and D with a bunch of adults and me running it. And uh, the first thing the, I remember, I had to keep silence, barbarian. <laughs> Uh, you did. <laughs> For I I suspect we shall hear from fake Alex Jones before yawn episode is done. <laughs> <laughs> Verily, we must hear one more time from Keenan, the barbarian. Silence, barbarian. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but really, it was... That episode was a lot of fun to make. It was, um, it was funny. It was my first time, one of my first times playing D and D, and I was awful at DMing. No, you weren't. No, you weren't. Oh, like, seriously, I've been playing D and D for forever. You were great. That game was so much fun. You were yeah. fantastic. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it was so much fun. The, the whole interview beholder thing. It was just, it was genius. Thank you. Yeah. And I also. Um, I loved about that episode. What I loved was planning it out, and I just, I loved playing it with you guys. It was, this was like a new box set, so it was like a part of D&D I have never experienced, and I got to experience with some of my best friends and family. Oh, thank you, buddy. Mm -hmm. So, I also, there's... One more thing I want to talk about before I get to my thank yous. Um, it's mostly random things. Random things. Random things, yes. Well, no co-host on this show has ever talked about random things. No, never. 
Uh, so I've been looking at the news a lot recently, and I found a lot of speculation around Ellen DeGeneres, the Ellen show, and I found that uh, what was happening with Ellen was that apparently she had been mistreating her staff. I'm not going to get into this because I know Dave said he didn't want to cover sad stories anymore. <laughs> they Basically, Ellen's now being accused of a lot, and none of it's good. Basically, 2020 is the dumpster fire none of us wanted. Mm -hmm. And why not have 2020 without throwing Ellen under the bus? Okay. So you would like people to take it easy on Ellen DeGeneres. That's what that's what you would like the listeners to do. No, actually. No, you want them to throw her under the bus. I mean, but it's 2020. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so you're just for total anarchy at this point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you are my child. <laughs> I was going to say, he's your son. <laughs> I, But really, there is something I want to talk about. I've heard so many stories, so many points of view through the show. I've heard, I've heard the point of view of a man who drinks a lot of whiskey. I've, that would be Christian Jensen, not your father. We should clarify that. <laughs> I was going to ask for I've, some clarification there. I've heard the points of view from a... Um, from a horror writer who likes to write mytho mythological horror mythology mythology such as Mary. Oh, I've I've heard I've heard the point of view of a man who is not very good with names, <laughs> Mr. Dave Thomas. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> I've heard the point of view of a video game gen genius named. Mr. Matt Wilderson. Wow. Oh, wow. wow. Genius. And Thank you. Welcome. And most of all, this show contains history. Without this show, none of the stuff from the past would be preserved in full detail. This show has every single detail from six years of the horror genre, and without it, history later on may not be invented. Now for my thank yous. Your thank yous? I, I have no plan for the speech. I'm just ad-libbing it. All right. Um, <laughs> also like your father. <laughs> ad-lib it towards the microphone, though. Uh, my first thank you is to all the listeners out there who tuned in every single episode, stuck all the way through, even when I was introduced, which I know that was probably very difficult to uh, go through. Oh. I don't think the listeners had a nah. problem. <laughs> no, you were popular right from the get-go. Yeah. Especially when you heard my six-year-old voice. Oh. I, I don't know what that was. <laughs> Does it bother you now? To go back and listen to when you were little and hear your voice versus your voice now? I, cr is it, uh, I cringe a lot. You Aww. cringe a lot? I cringe a lot just hearing my, like, seven-year-old, ten-year-old self making a D and d campaign. And I just hear that, and I think to myself, that had no... That had no thought in it. That had no <laughs> process. What was that? You know what that was? What? That, that was, was the keen that way, was son. Keen way. That was the keen way. No thought. No planning. Just <laughs> charge in. Just Leroy Jenkins it. <laughs> I want to thank you to all the listeners who, from the get-go, get-go, sorry, I mispronounced a lot of words, um, who stuck with me growing up. This show was a big part of my childhood. Aww. And from, from my first couple of appearances to, to interviewing my dad to D&D &D and to <laughs> the inevitable battle 
inevitable battle between me and Christian Christian <laughs> Jensen, I just want to say thank you. And now for my thank yous to everyone on the show. First of all, my father, who originally said, hey, yeah, you can come up on the show, even though my mom was not too cool. <laughs> it's one of the few times we disagreed, your mom and I, yes. Um, it's really, thank you. It, without you allowing me to come on here, I would have never had any of this Never had any of these experiences. Oh. Um, I also... You okay? Yeah. Mary, can you get him a Kleenex? No. <laughs> Obviously, folks, Dungeon Master's feeling a little emotional, and I'm feeling a little emotional, too. Um, You brought up when you interviewed me. That is my favorite single episode that was what dave episode 200 uh yeah i think so yeah it was 200 yeah and and yeah. that was phenomenal dispensed, we dispensed with the regular format and it was just you and me and because because dungeon master said he said dad you know you always interview people people never interview you and i said well you know what you should interview me so for episode 200 you interviewed me that was that is there's been a lot of great episodes but that is my absolute favorite I'm glad. I also, for my dad, he raised me, he helped to raise me, he taught me a lot of things that I know today, and I love you, Dad. I love you too, buddy. Mary San Giovanni, you are one of my best friends in life. I remember when I first met you you came here to introduce yourself to me and i remember when we played terraria and talked about it on the show and talked about arc that was mm-hmm. a lot of fun one of my favorite moments was planning that and i want to say thank you for all the help you've been to me and to my dad and to everyone around you all oh. these years Thank you, Sihol. You're a great person. Yeah. I concur. You are a great person. Thank you. Mr. Dave Thomas, uh, you were one of the funniest people I ever met. <laughs> Thank you. I've never met anyone as... I've never laughed as much <laughs> to anyone other than you. I've heard all your rants. And they're <laughs> very, very funny. I... I end up just having to cover my mouth in laughter when we're recording. It's, it's <laughs> so funny. I I think you're a great person. I'm sorry life's thrown so many curveballs at you, but you know what? You get past them, and I'm glad you are. And I'm glad you have been getting better, and I hope life stops throwing you so many curveballs. Oh, thank you so much. You, you're you're the best. You really are. <laughs> Mr. Matt Wildeson, I haven't known you for so much time as I can remember, but I just, I thank you for your support, and I think you're a really great person. I'm glad you help out my dad and everyone on the show with everything and I think you've done a really good job with everything you've ever done and I'm glad you've been able to keep up all these years and it's really just amazing to see that. Thank you buddy. All right. Dungeon Master 77.1 everybody. Or, or, I think we should retire that now. You are no longer Dungeon Master 77.1. You are, in fact, Fire Lord HD. Yes. That's all one word. Fire Lord HD on YouTube. Um, all right. You want to go play? Uh, I guess. It's up to you. You can hang out if you want. Okay. He has a very, he has a very cool diorama, guys. It's, it's Jason Voorhees in a post-apocalyptic circus. 
And he's been nice. building it for the last two days with every toy in his room. There's no more floor left in the room because <laughs> every toy in the room is incorporated into this. But all right. Um, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Let's go with the professor, Mary San Giovanni. Okay. Um, I feel like this show has been an integral part of my life for, well, obviously for the last six years, but it's been tied, you know, inextricably to so much that has happened to me, uh, you know, in, in this, in the, in the last six years, uh, Prior to being on the show, when Brian and I were not together, it made me feel good to know he was doing something that made him happy. And then my first appearance on the show was, I think, one of those moments that confirmed to me that that he's my soulmate and that I love him and Yes, Brian. I I I don't mean to interrupt or to mansplain, but but can I speak to that? Because uh, a, a listener brought that up on Twitter. Your your first appearance. There's one of my favorite parts of The Office, and I love The Office. But one of my favorite parts is the the final episode when Jim says, "How many people are lucky enough in life to have the moment they knew captured live on camera?" And he says to the documentary crew, you did that for us. As someone brought up on Twitter, your first appearance on the show, when Dave points out, you two are, are meant for each other. Dave was right, but uh, typical Dave fashion. I had figured that out a half an hour before you said it, Dave. Um, <laughs> well, you know. But, yeah, you go back to season one. I'm not very you, smart. <laughs> you go back to season one and listen to Mary's first appearance. It's just like. Jim Halpert says on The Office. I mean, it's right. And that's another reason why I would never take these off the Internet. That's there. Yeah. You know, one day when we have grandkids, they can go they can go listen to that. <laughs> so I'm sorry, but go no, ahead. No, I uh, that was that was important to me. And, and then over, you know, the last, you know, the, over the years that followed, I think a lot of the important things that have happened to us, you know, for better or for worse, we always had the show where we could get together and, and just, you know, talk about things and laugh and, and have a good time. And I've constantly been reminded of, you know, how much I love you guys pretty much every week in, in the sense that like, you know, we get together and, and you make me laugh and, you know, you you wow me with your insight into things. And and of course, it reminds me, you know, over and over again that, you know, how much I love you, baby. And because I'm impressed that that, you know, that you've that you've taken on this mantle and that you've made us a part of it, you know, that we have done good things like the like like Dave mentioned, the telethons. Um, Sometimes when we get together and we record and it's just, you know, the four of us or the five of us or uh, we almost forget that we're recording. And I've heard guests say that, too. There's a very intimate feel to this, you know, where we've gotten to interview some of our closest friends. We've gotten to interview some of the people we admire most in this industry. But a lot of times it's just us talking and we forget that we almost forget that there's that there's going to be an audience out there that's going to listen to this. And it's there, there's a sort of I think there's an intimacy that builds there in our, you know, sharing our thoughts and feelings. But when you see the result of that, like Dave said, when people say, you know, I, I felt directionless, I, I felt like I had nobody till I listened to your show. And then I rediscovered horror again. And I, and I found, you know, I found my tribe. I found the people that I that. I click with or when people were, you know, I was, I was sick in the hospital and I listened to you guys and you made it easier, you know, or I was going through a divorce and I was heartbroken and yet I listened to you guys and I'd feel like I wasn't alone, you know, and especially I think with the telethon where we actually raised money to, to help people to either, you know, to, to help them save their lives or make their lives better. And, and I, 
I think it, it, it continues to amaze me. It continues to astound me that that I could ever be part of something that's that's so meaningful and so much bigger than myself. I I am continually touched that, you know, for all the horrible stories that we've had to report on, that there are women that actually feel they can come to us and trust us uh, with their most personal, you know, tragic stories and and trust that that we can that we can give them some sense of peace or justice and you know as as horrible and taxing as it is reporting on those stories i'd hope that at least that never changes that if that if women feel that even if they just need someone to talk to or vent to you know what you can still contact me I, we don't have the platform to to report it as the news but i don't ever want those women to feel alone i mean that that makes me feel it makes me feel good that we could have done something to to make people's lives better because you know whether it's writing or recording it's still it's still a a, a kind of solitary practice and it, it it always means something to us to know that it matters to somebody else something that we did um there are you know there are tons of funny moments I, I i don't know that i've laughed as hard as i have with you guys you are family and you are friends you are some of the people that i trust most in the world um i have enjoyed watching fire lord hd grow um and in getting closer to him and in seeing what a what a sweet and and thoughtful and creative and funny guy that you know he's he he always was and is becoming even more so um i i feel very close to dave and matt i they've done you know not just remarkable like technical wizardry for me in the past but they've been there to talk to and to bounce ideas off of and to give me perspective and um i I also hope that that never goes away. I mean, whether this podcast continues on into infinity or, or you know, stops today, it, it doesn't matter. You guys are still, you know, two of my closest friends. Um, and, you know, I, I'd, I'd want to thank all of you. I'd want to thank, you know, all of you for making me feel like, you know, my opinion and my voice on the show mattered uh, for actually making me feel smart. <laughs> Um, for, because, uh, cause I'll tell you the truth, not very many people have made me feel smart in my life. Um, Aww. so it, it, it feels kind of nice, you know? Uh, yeah, but I mean, look who you're surrounded by. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty low bar to hop over. <laughs> um, and you know, I, I, I want to thank, you know, the Armand and, you know, project I radio for giving us a, for giving us a chance, you know? All of, you know, like I said, all of the guests that we've interviewed, um, it's been a pleasure getting to know you as as people and as writers and, and artists and other creatives in the field, other, you know, entrepreneurs. Uh, you've been inspiring and you've been uh, it's just fascinating to talk to. And I feel, you know, I, I'm glad we've gotten to interview friends and and. Uh, idols and and heroes and and new folks uh, who are still have that passion and that excitement for writing and um, and of course you know I I'd, I'd want to thank the the listeners the people who you know tune in every week and who have found some value in in what we've done here thank you you know thank you for making us uh, a part of your lives and you know as Brian said that's not going to go away. You know, sometimes things change, but they don't end, you know, and I think that's, you know, kind of what Brian's giving me this weird look. I don't mean that the horror show. No, I'm giving you a weird look because you just paraphrased a rush song. (laughs) (laughs) That was the other thing. I feel like since this is the very last episode that I should admit that there is actually one or two rush songs that I like, but (laughs) But wait, but wait, all these years. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, um, I still don't like his voice. He still sounds like a strangled cat. But 
they're the least evils of the rest of the Rush songs. So don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm not on the path to Rush fandom, okay? I just hate those two songs the least. Dungeon Master has <laughs> many questions. He's raising his hand. Well, yes, Dungeon Master. First, you say the guy's voice is like a screaming goat. Then you say it's like a cat being strangled. Yes. Which is it? I think it's a little of both. I think if you were to put a screaming goat and a strangling cat in a blender, that would be deadly. Who are you? <laughs> Don't undo all the all the nice romantic. You know, stuff we've we've been together it. almost enough to make it common law, and you would. <laughs> And you would yet you would utter this in my presence. I also just admitted that two songs aren't that bad. Which two songs? The one I did for um, the telethon. Time stands still. Stand right, still. because uh, you know, as Dave said, I I do kind of regret we never got to do our 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 duet there because that would have been fun. I do like to sing, um, and I can't remember the other one, but it was the other one I was considering singing. And I said to you, remember in the car, I was like, oh, this one's not that bad. Rivendell. Maybe it was a, it was a slower song. Closer to the heart. No um, tears. It was tears. Tears. It was tears. It was off tears. Yeah, it was yeah. tears. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. Those two songs aren't that bad, but I still maintain that I do not like Rush. Well. But I figured that the, I figured that the audience needed. I mean, they deserve to know that there are two songs that I'm sort of okay with. That's the note you want to go off on. There's two Rush songs that are not as bad as the other. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, I, I guess I, I think a lot of my, a lot of my, you know, prior speech was sort of heavy, and and okay. I just kind of, right. I, I I'm, I'm tearing up a little bit here, and I, uh, you, you, you know, know what? I'm going to send. I just found a dime under my heater. Since you all have been doing this without pay for so many years, <laughs> I'm going to split this dime between all of you. Woo-hoo! All right. All right. So that's like two and a half cents. Two and a half cents each. Something like yes. that. All right. One, two, three, four. Excellent. Six. All right. Out of my ten. Yeah, something like that. Mr. Fake Alex Jones himself, Matt Wilderson, the floor is yours. I mean, after uh after Fire Lord HD speech, I don't know how I'm gonna follow that up. And uh <laughs> I mean Mary's was great too, but I, I think what I'll do is I will start with an airing airing of grievances. <laughs> this is why we love you, Matt. I'll start with you, Mr. Keene. Okay. How dare you come into my life and instantly become one of my best friends? <laughs> the audacity of you, sir. <laughs> I, you just, you know, you pull me in off the street. And you go, hey, you know, this kid knows how to do audio work, too. So I might need him someday. So let's make him part of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and then you feed me, you know, and I'm sorry, Fire Lord. I know you're there. And I, I, I would tell you earmuffs before every time I swear, but it's just not going to happen. Um, you know, you'd feed me this line of bullshit all the time that how great I am and everything. And then I'd leave and I know you'd talk shit about me um <laughs> <laughs> no in all honesty i i remember the very first day that um i got to be a permanent member i guess i would say because I, I was here like doing like every other month for a little while and uh i remember that day well i think uh my first book edge of twilight had finally came out and i was in the kitchen signing uh, copies of it for you, Mary and Dave. And you walked up to me and said, well, Mary's not going to be here that much. So I guess that means you're on the show. <laughs> <laughs> and my stomach fluttered and my heart beat an extra skip. And I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it, it was in, in all honesty, though, it, it meant a lot because at that time I was just starting out with writing and I, in all honesty, never even thought it would get anywhere. Um, I never really thought I was that good at it. And I'm sure most authors feel that way. But, you know, I have you to thank for that 
because I think a lot of your t- your tutoring and along with Mary, because a lot of the talks that Mary and I had after recording episodes was a lot about writing. And I hope to still have those someday. Absolutely. Um, I know the world is basically a burning ball uh, just spinning around through space right now. And we're all trying to figure out, you know, how to make heads or tails of everything. But I hope someday that can be a norm again. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I have you guys to thank for a lot of stuff. Um, I don't think I would be in the public eye as much if it wasn't for the show. Um, you know, I have a lot. <sighs> it's getting a little hard. Sorry. Um, it just meant a lot. Sorry. It meant a lot. It meant a lot to us too, dude. It did. Absolutely. Thank you. You know, make that Mike Myers joke from uh, Wayne's World. I'm like, I promised myself I wouldn't cry. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it was great meeting all of the guests. I-, I wish that shit didn't go the way that it did in the latter half of the show because I-, I loved the in-studio interaction with guests. I feel like that was the best way to do the interviews. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, Brian, you still did great doing them, you know, over the horrible program that is Skype. But, um, you know, the the interactions face to face were great. Um, I only wish I could have met more authors because the ones that we did meet and getting to talk to them. It it was just it was fun. It was something that I will probably never be able to do again in my life. I mean, who knows? I don't know. But. I will say one of my favorite interactions with an author that you had on the show. And it's only because I've only I've only been around for a short while. I think what it's been a year and a half that I've been on the show, I think. Yeah. Has to be Christian Jensen. <laughs> <laughs> All roads lead of, back to Christian Jensen. Yeah, Pretty much. <laughs> we, we've mentioned him a bunch. Um, not only because of, you know, him trying to give your son a drink, but he also <laughs> drew a knife on me. <laughs> I forgot about that. (laughs) And then I to him. And then in that moment, we thought we could be friends. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I I, I really that was that was one of the first interviews where I kind of felt like, you know, this is this is this show. Like having him on at this. Like, it feels like this is the type of interview you always want to have with this kind of show. It's not it's not sit down and super formal. We're you know, cutting jokes, we're making fun of each other. And to me, that's the thing with the show that I will always miss. Yeah. Sorry, doing it again. (laughs) It's okay. It's all right. Okay. But I'm going to move on. Uh, I did start talking about Brian and I feel like his uh, ego gets stroked enough as it is. Um, (laughs) This is accurate. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to move on to Dave. Now, Dave, you and I, when we first met, we talked a little bit about video games. You told me about some bands that I had no idea who the hell they were. Uh, I had since looked some of those bands up and I do enjoy their music. But when you first said about what was going on with you, I was really worried about you. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, when you handed it over to me, I was frightened. Because I didn't want to ruin it. Hmm. You didn't. I had every confidence in you. Seriously. I knew. I've said this on the show. I knew going into to cancer treatment and all this stuff that followed, the one thing I didn't have to worry about was the show being taken care of because I knew you could do it. And I you can, did. I can yeah. vouch for that, too. I, uh, you know, I'm not a religious person. <laughs> Well, anybody that's read the Triangle Belief, they they know my thoughts on religion and spiritualism and the supernatural and everything else. Um, I can't remember who I was telling this to. It might have been Paul Tremblay. Uh, it, it was somebody like that. We were, were talking about the show, you know, 
privately and, and Dave's diagnosis. And I, I said, I absolutely believe whatever force there is in the universe sent that our way yeah. because it knew this was coming. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, Matt, I, I, I concur with Dave, you know, we, that we, that was the one area we didn't worry with all the uncertainty that was going on with Dave. The one thing we knew was the show would, would could still go up every week. Thank you. But uh, yeah, uh, I I did manage to pull it off, as you guys pointed out. Um, I remember the first time I did the first episode, I was looking through every little piece of detail that Dave had on Libsyn and how he would put stuff up. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to mirror every single piece of this because I'm not going to screw this up. <laughs> um, I think the first time it uh, the first episode that went up, I probably checked like 13 or 14 times that I had the right time <laughs> and date. <laughs> but then I got used to it and, uh, you know, started adding goofy music. And, you know, mm-hmm. I, I think one of the first fu- moments I liked the most was uh, when we had the Adam and Eve ads and I added like the sexy music behind Brian and <laughs> <laughs> then he just so happened to talk to uh, CV Hunt about something. And that was appropriate to also add sexy music behind that. <laughs> and, <laughs> and people seem to like that. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, Dave, I, I was worried about you and I was really happy when I found out you were doing better and I was even happier when you came back, you know, and uh I just, you know, I want us to stay in contact. Oh, that's don't have to worry about that. I'm like an annoying fungus. You're stuck. <laughs> Way to sell it, Dave. <laughs> well, you know, I've been called worse things. I, I'm not going to miss the trolls that would send me shitty emails. I'm, I'm certainly not going to miss that. Like the person said, I wish you would have died from cancer. You know, so yeah, we're going to get to those when when y'all are done. I'm gonna <laughs> my advice. Um. <laughs> Mary, it was a pleasure meeting you. Um, like I said before, I loved our talks after every show. Me too. Uh, the only regret I have is that I wish I could articulate myself as good as you do. Because um, most of the time, I stumble over a lot of words. And uh, even though you don't plan it, you get your message across very clearly. And I, I wish that we had one last book review. So I could have possibly outshined you. It was a goal of mine. <laughs> it was. Because even from the start, I was like, oh, everybody comes here, just listens to Mary. And I was like, well, may- may- maybe I could try beating her once. And, <laughs> 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 and then around the second book interview, I was like, yeah, that's that's impossible. That's not going to happen. <laughs> but yeah, it, it was. I feel honored having all of you as friends. You know, um. Fire Lord, I, if you're still in the room, uh, I didn't get to know you much, like you said about me. But what I do know is that you are 100 percent your father. <laughs> yes, I love your YouTube channel, and I have a feeling someday I'll be reading books that you're going to write in the future. So I, I wish I wish you luck in your YouTube endeavors. Keep it up. You're doing great. Um, I hope maybe in the future that we get to hang out a little bit more. And I also wanted to tell you, cause I don't, I think I've told your father to tell you, but I don't know if he did. I am extremely jealous of your Godzilla action figure collection. <laughs> I did tell you that. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I remember the first time I came downstairs and I was like, Oh my God, this kid has great Godzilla action figures. He's got more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> so yes i will always be very jealous of your collection but uh you know at, at the end of the day i also want to thank every single person that's listened to the show you know all of you out there made this show the gem that it is without you listening we'd just be talking to a wall you know and i know brian does that recreationally anyway but um <laughs> I, I do mean that, though. If if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't have the show that we did. It wouldn't have gotten to where it is. It is sad to see it go. But as things as things always are, sometimes the thing you love the most, you have to let go to watch it flourish. Mm-hmm. 
that I believe is the case with this. So in my closing words, I would just like to say that I love all of you, all of you that listen and, uh, you know, we have 300 plus great episodes for you to always tune into. It'll always be there. And Brian will have interviews in the future that you guys can listen to as well. And I'll always be behind the curtain pushing. <laughs> One last thing. Uh, somebody has to, uh, Tell me he has to talk to you guys before I'm done. So hold on one second. Okay. Um, oh, no. <laughs> right. If I didn't have a final word. Um, <laughs> with the way the world is and the rampant COVID out there, uh, I would just like to tell everybody that you have to go to my website and buy super blue non-fluoride toothpaste. It cures COVID, people. <laughs> God. <laughs> I can't stress this enough. The FBI tried to get me to take it down, and I said, no, I'm saving lives. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> yes. Matt Wilderson and fake Alex Jones. Yes. Let's see, gentlemen. All right. Well, there's, there's two more people that we need to hear from. Uh, so let's listen to Phoebe and Coop, and then we'll come back with my final thoughts. Hi everyone, it's Phoebe. Today was the last recording of the horror show with Brian Keene. I can't believe it has been seven years since all this started. I think back to one of my first appearances on the show and laugh that it was me counting how many times Christian Jensen said the F word. I also laugh when I remember when Brian Smith blew that number out of the water. It has been such a privilege to be included in this wonderful team of people providing so much to the listeners. The Horror Show has tackled many serious topics over the years, and this is something I respect. Though I wasn't usually there for those shows, I know they were committed to doing the appropriate research and giving all the sides a chance to respond. I'm very proud of all of you for those tough kinds of shows. Most people would shy away, but you guys met the issues head on and with grace. I'm grateful that I was welcomed into this community, and you all accepted my wacky idea called Phoebe Unleashed. So many talented writers gave the time to answer one random question with grace and style. I remember one of the interviews, I was asking Rath James White a question. He is a large, imposing gentleman I respect, and I wanted to make a good impression because I represented the horror show. The question was asked, and his answer was heartfelt and wonderful. And I forgot to turn the recorder on. Yep, typical Phoebe. I was so embarrassed that I had to go back and admit my big goof. Rath was kind and understanding and graciously answered the question again. I don't want this to be Phoebe unleashed and yammering, so I did make some notes, but this doesn't even capture all of my memories of my time with the horror show. I remember dinner at Scares of Cares with a group of authors, including F. Paul Wilson, and that impressed my mom, who was unbeknownst to me, a longtime fan of Repairman Jack. I remember Dungeon Master running a D&D game that was amazing. He kept Brian in line with style. I remember Matt Blasey's touching interview after the passing of George Romero. I think everyone had tears in their eyes. Brian's interview that was done by his son, Dungeon Master, was an insight to their amazing, loving relationship. Maurice brought us his interview. There is no need to say more. Most entertaining thing I've ever heard. Meeting all the fans of the show at Scares the Care was a highlight of being on the show. You all had so much appreciation for what these guys, and yes, Mary, you're one of the guys, did each week. Christmas extravaganzas with Dave were always so much fun. And hopefully something we might be able to do again in the future. Who knows? I could go on and on, but I won't. Matt, I'm sorry we never got to cook together. I love the humor you brought to the show. Dungeon Master, you are an amazing young man, bound for success in all you pursue. It has been a joy to see you grow up. Your parents are raising you right. Mary, you're my girl and my BFF. I love our long wandering conversations, and we must continue them. 
Brian, you are a ringmaster extraordinaire. Your dedication to the genre, helping people in need, all while entertaining them, is what kept the show going. You have a huge heart. To the fans, you are what has helped lift Dave and I up during these challenging times. You have reached out to ask how you can help, and you have helped so much beyond words. We love you all. And Dave, I am very proud of the work you have done with The Horror Show. I know you love this creative outlet and will miss it dearly. But I also know this will be a stepping stone into a bigger and better thing. Or things. I love you. The cats love you. I know there's so much more I could say. But I think you can all feel the love in my heart I have for the Horror Show family. I wish you all love, light, and lots of cake. Phoebe signing off. What's up, everybody? It's Coop. Just wanted to say thank you to all of the listeners. You guys are awesome sharing this out on the socials. All of the guests and people that have been interviewed on this podcast in the last 300 episodes or so, you guys really did bring the content. And also to my crew, to Icebat, to Dave, Phoebe, Matt, Mary, Dungeon Master 77.1, and Brian. You guys are awesome. It has been both an honor and a privilege to have been able to be part of this. To see that idea that we had back in the day come to fruition like this. Jesus would have been proud. I know I am. Anyway, y'all be safe, be healthy, stay away from the Rona, wear your mask in public, and we'll see you next time. Take it easy. Okay, so there we have it, Phoebe and Coop. Um, unless Coop didn't get his turn in in time, in which case it was just Phoebe. We won't know because we're recording <laughs> this before <laughs> Coop records his. Um, so, you know, Dave brought up who's going to pick up the mantle? Who's going to report the tough news stories? And Mary brought up, you know, who are these women going to confide in? Um Tommy Clark of Necrocasticon posted a a blog in part asking the same thing, you know, and, and Tommy said that, you know, he had friends who called me the Ricky Lake of horror. And I would point out, okay, well, Tommy, why are they calling me that? Um, If you take a look at the real work we did, perhaps wonder what they're afraid of of a show like this finding out about. Um, But if you want to call me the Ricky Lake of horror, I'll take that. Uh, But the bottom line is Ricky Lake ain't in the studio anymore after this. Um, You know, Dave said, who else will step up? Uh, A lot of people have said, I don't think anybody could step up and do this. I disagree. Um, I've seen several individuals out there who could step up and do this i'm not going to name any of them uh nor would i say this to them in private because i am not going to put that kind of pressure on a younger author or a younger professional working in this industry but i see them i see you and i know you're thinking about it and i know you can do it you want my prediction for the future it's the end of the Avengers Endgame, okay? And, you know, Tony dies, and, and Pepper tells him you can rest now, and they do a lovely funeral, but that's not the scene I'm talking about. I'm talking about what comes after with a brand new next generation team of Avengers. You want my prediction? Four years from now, there's not one show reporting on these news stories, there's four or five. And I wish those people luck. And if you ever need advice, Reach out to me. And I would also echo what Mary said. If if you're in trouble or you just need somebody to talk to, no, we're not going to have uh, necessarily the platform to report it in the manner we used to. But we can still listen and we can still advise mm-hmm. and maybe we can point you to someone who can publicly help. Um, 
But in the meantime, you can still listen to Matt every week on Grindcast. You can still listen to Mary every week on Cosmic Shenanigans. You can still listen to me every week on Defenders Dialogue. Those three shows are not going away uh, because they bring us joy to do, and we're going to continue to do them. A reminder, do not unsubscribe from the horror show because you will still get occasional content via this podcast. Uh, It's just going to be in a very different format than what you are accustomed to. Uh, A reminder that September 26th, Saturday, we will have an after party, a listener mailbag on YouTube hosted by Stephen Kozanowski. Uh, So just keep an eye on my YouTube channel for details on that. And you can hear more from Dungeon Master as well at Fire Lord HD. That's all one word, lowercase, Fire Lord HD on YouTube. Subscribe and like. And, uh, yeah, I am done. See ya. Bye. Bye. Tony, look at me. We're going to be okay. You can rest now.